Good morning, folks. We've got a big quake, some eye candy, and top science news. I jab at some scientists and we do a tiny review at the end. But let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day on the sun was quiet in just about all ways. No flaring as we lack sunspots facing Earth, they're all on the backside, and the solar wind is relatively calm as well. But we're waiting impact from the coronal hole streams emanating from these dark regions. The top quake of the last day struck luckily out in the middle of nowhere. 6.6 .6 could have been even bigger down here, still wouldn't have disrupted much of anything. Pretty impressive new satellite products over at Goddard SVS. First glance suggests it's nothing but a global warming satellite, but the inclusion of the solar-induced fluorescence indicates an expanded view of feedbacks and processes at the surface that weren't always in the discussion before. A bit more eye candy here as we go to the Veil Nebula, the remnant of a supernova long ago. And today, Hubble has restacked and calibrated and resolved the highest detail shot of that nebula ever. Tiny filaments amidst the wisps become prominently visible for the first time. Folks, sometimes you have to build a paradigm of knowledge piece by piece and bit by bit. And then sometimes you get one that throws it all at the wall and it's covered in glue. Total electron content, geomagnetic storms from various forms of space weather, and even outgoing long-wave radiation all begin to move in the days before the earthquake, and this helps with both the timing and location forecasting solid advancement there. Reality check for those global warmists I mentioned earlier, yet another confirmation that the past droughts were far worse than modern ones. Sparking fears over them is unwarranted, and we merely look back to the last two grand solar minima to find times when Europe is in big trouble and takes those million death famine and disease events. Now, this next really requires you to have seen yesterday's top story, and remember it, they have identified a tiny window of time when the solar forcing of El Nino and La Nina disappeared. It is one of the most certain and strong solar forcings of weather and climate, but they say looking back through history, they found a little period where it's not there, no connection. How did they do this? They used the oxygen-18 isotope. Guys, I can't make this stuff up. Now, if you don't get the joke, just wait a moment. But first, we're going to congratulate the Fractal Frog team led by Adrian at Suspect Sky. Whether you hit multiple platforms and want to save time or you're just sick of seeing your favorite people censored, this is a weapon. I'm putting a lot of hope in it for the future, and they hit their Kickstarter goal here recently as they are less than two days from the closing. Now up next, we've got two Superflare articles describing habitability of exoplanets over long periods of time. It's basically a confirmation of the science we've seen there with enough in them to remind us that when Earth's magnetic field hits its minimum, everything from the sun is like a super flare for a short while. And that's an excellent segue into reviewing the stories related to Earth's cyclical catastrophe, resetting again here this century. Earlier this week, we watched the planets continue to show their changing faces as the faint equatorial X-ray ionospheric return of Uranus became flaring spots near the auroral zone. Not hard to tie in the planetary magnetic field with that one. We saw a continuation of the Mars quakes. It was important that those previous upticks weren't just momentary, and now we have confirmation. The planet continues waking up. And of course, there was the huge story yesterday, the one where they clearly describe a plasma strike in Antarctica and decide they can get everyone to just believe it's a brand new kind of meteor impact that turns into a plasma strike. It's dating with the oxygen-18 isotope matches the former bad science with that dating method from the Tibetan ice cap, and there's the telltale signature microtectites of the event as well. Folks, indeed all of the planets are changing. They are potentially related to the planet's magnetic field changing. Glad we got that electroquake article today as well. The nearby stars have already activated in the direction of the galactic current sheet, and we are perfectly due for the cycle in terms of the timing throughout history and seeing all of the signs on Earth that it is unfolding once again, now. We greatly appreciate your support. Everything on this topic is in our new book, The Next End of the World, available at otf.cells.com in physical form and as a PDF for instant gratification. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.